like our list here in case of set we are having multiple methods which are predefined with the sets. So now the thing is that we are here we are going to give you a list of some methods which are related with the sets for the set related operations which you will be using on a very regular basis in our Scala application development. But to get the complete list of all these methods you can consider you can consult with the official documentation of Scala. So now here we are with the, having the different methods are there. So we are having the respective methods and with the description one line description to denote the what is the purpose of that method say plus. So here we are having creates a new set with an additional element unless the element is already present. We know that in case of set all the elements must be of the of the distinct that, that means they must be of the distinct values. So minus so create a new set with a given element removed from this set here contents which returns one boolean that means true and false true or false. So returns true if the element in is content in the list in the set rather false otherwise. So in this way we are having multiple different methods are there. So here you can consider this plus so creates a new immutable set with additional elements from the past sets. So here we are having this we are having this plus plus we are having this minus add string appends all the elements of this immutable set to a string builder object. So appends here you can see that the basic difference between these two is that we are having one separator of the type of string. So what will happen appends all the elements of this immutable set to a string builder using a separator string has been which has been passed as a second argument to this add string method. We are having apply we are having this count so counts the number of elements in the immutable set which satisfy a certain predicate. We are having copy to array copies elements of this immutable set to an array. We are having diff we are having drop returns all elements except first n1 so n has been passed as input parameter drop right we are having this drop while so drop longest prefix of the elements that satisfy a certain predicate. So here we are having this equals which is having the output argument as boolean which is of the type any. So the, the equals method for arbitrary sequences compares this sequence to other sequence object. So now we are having this exists which returns boolean. So test whether a predicate holds for some of the elements of this immutable set. In this way we are having this filter find for all and for each. You can pause the video you can check them the respective documentation is in front of you. We are having this head returns the first element of this immutable set. We are having this init so returns all elements except the last. So we are having this intersect is empty iterator creates a new iterator over all the elements content in the iterable object last returns the last element. So head returns the first element of this immutable set we are having this map also. We are having this max finds the largest element of the set min finds the smallest element of the set. So just you can read them it is very simple we have written the respective descriptions as well. Product returns the product of all elements of this immutable set with respect to the star operator in num. We are having this subset of we are having this sum returns the sum of all elements of this immutable set with respect to the plus operator in num. So you are having this tell we are having this take take right so returns last n elements to array returns an array containing all the elements of this immutable set. So here we are having this two buffer we are doing the conversion type conversion to buffer to list return a list containing all elements of this immutable set. So from set to list we are going for this method that is to list to map to sequence and also to string. So let us go for one practical demonstration to show you that how this methods or at least some of the methods is working using the Scala coding and we shall give you the explanation and obviously we shall execute and we will be getting the outputs as well. So here is the demonstration for you.
In this demonstration, we shall show you some use of set methods in our Scala coding. So here you see we can use the set dot min method to find out the minimum and set dot maximum method to find out the maximum of the elements available in a set. So here we have defined one set and the set is name of the set is num which is containing some integer values. So to find the maximum and the minimum, minimum and the maximum of the elements, we can write this one as uh, num.min and num.max. So now if I execute my code, so here you can find that minimum of this element is 5 and maximum of this element is 45. So it is not mandatory that this set elements will remain shorted. You can have some different order also. Then also this particular function will be working. So let me put some values here. Okay, so now if I execute, re-execute my code. So now you are getting this, the values are getting computed as this and that. Okay, so this is the use of this minimum and the maximum methods with our set objects. Okay, now let me show you the another one. So find the common values in sets. That means in between two sets, I want to calculate the common values. So you can use either set dot ampersand method or set dot intersect method to find out the common values between two sets. Here you can find that we are having two sets that is a num1 and num2 and they are containing some integer values here. So now I have used this num1 dot ampersand num2 and here we have used num1 dot intersect num2 so that it will find out the common elements between these two sets. You can find that 9 and 20, they are the common elements here. So that's why if I execute my code, I'll be getting 9 and 20, which are the intersecting elements between these two sets. So now I'm putting another value, say, I'm putting some value like, say, 11. And here also I'm putting a value, say, like 11. So now if I execute the same, so 29 and 11 are the common values which are existing in between these two sets. So in this way, different methods which are there at the predefined in the set class can be used in our Scala coding accordingly. So in this way, the different set methods which are predefined in Scala can be used in our Scala coding accordingly. Thanks for watching this video.